Welcome to Telling the Tale. I'm your host, Mitchell Wolf, and as always, I'm joined by co-host Dustin Jackson! Woo! Hey, Mitchell, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to bring the fire today. I'm hoping that you would. I, I was really hoping that you would bring the fire as I uh, got ready for recording and, and might have uh, told you that I was hoping that you would bring the fire. Today we're talking about Minecraft Story Mode, Episode 3, The Last Place you look released on november 24th 2015 directed by jonathan stouter designed by michael kirkbride mark darren and grady standard and written by michael chowng laura hakim hakmin uh jack jacques mean maybe uh eric sterp and timothy williams that's not even the first time laura's last name has appeared on my list of names to read and uh, wow! It, how would you imagine that's pronounced? It's J A C Q M I N. Uh, J- Jacquem. Jacquemin. I mean, it's M I N at the that's end. That's what I mean. I yeah, I, yeah, that one. Jacquemin. Maybe. Jacques Jacquemin. It's hard. It's hard to. St- uh, you know what? It's great. There's a C yeah. Q M in the middle in there in that order. C Q M. I don't think I've ever seen that arrangement of letters before i haven't either it's new that i remember so dustin we're in the thick of it we're in the middle of minecraft story mode episode three no we're in the middle of minecraft story mode season one we did episode three yes we did do episode three how do you feel how did you feel oh how (laughs) me ah damn i thought it i could just pass that to you (laughs) Uh, (laughs) let's say it at the same time Okay, three, two, one. I felt it was okay. glad to see Soren. <laughs> <laughs> it was okay. It was okay. It was certainly better than the last episode. Yeah, definitely. And uh, there's aspects of it that I might have even liked more than the first episode, but I'm I'm not sure I'm ready to say that. Yeah, I just feel like the first episode did a lot of setup. We kind of had a little, it had a little more meat on its bones. Yeah, we're Uh, still in the pretty short episode era of this season, I guess. Yeah. Uh, One thing I liked about it, though, is it felt very uh, focused. Like, it felt Mm -hmm. like, okay, this is the Soren slash Enderman episode. Yeah, I learned a lot about Enderman in this episode. (laughs) Yeah, I learned all about the way they walk and, and move their heads. Um, they don't mind you if you have a pumpkin on your head, if you wear a pumpkin on your head. I learned that. That's, that's true. That never comes up. Like, I don't think the costume was made from a pumpkin, was it? No, in fact, uh, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here. But there is a record that you can listen to where Soren is detailing his research notes about the Endermen. And he says, it's well established that you can wear a pumpkin on your head in order to not catch the gaze of an enderman but uh it changes their behavior somewhat it actually makes them like you which soren didn't want to do soren just wanted to see like okay how are they acting in a way that they they they, like don't care that i'm there so he made an enderman costume out of like stuff that smelled like them so it it wasn't trying to trick them into liking them it was just trying to trick them into thinking he was one of them yeah he wants to study their default behavior rather than get any change out of them yeah i can respect that you know yeah 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 uh so i think we left in the last episode with ivor doing a sonic the hedgehog weird thing and then like just walking (laughs) away this episode starts out so funny yeah the others just like yelling in slow motion and then ivor's just like casually strolling by yeah and then he just walks out of the room and then he's gone for the episode we don't see him again yes see ya (laughs) yeah i can't let's let's talk about ivor real quick before we don't talk about him at all for the rest of the podcast episode (laughs) i don't understand what the game wants me to feel about ivor yeah I kind of get the feeling that, uh, okay, he's a jerk, he's an asshole, but he he's trying to stop you, but it feels like he's, like, still trying to do, like, the right thing in this situation. Or maybe. 
that that's just kind of the energy I got. Well, he was trying at first, but the <laughs> Telltale is more than happy to not have him in this entire episode. So, like, yeah, we are searching out the Order of the Stone, and we're doing that. And we need to find Soren so he can make a Formidabomb. And spoiler alert, he does end up helping with that. And then we use the Formidabomb on the Wither. And uh, that does work. And then it doesn't work in that order. And like, <laughs> that's this episode. Good episode summary. You didn't even need a minute. Yeah, it's really fast, right? Uh, it ignores <laughs> a lot of what happened. But that's, I guess, the, the bones of it that meet on that skeleton. The... The the thing is, all of those things are, like, where we're driving our characters toward. Plus some stuff about, like, Petra's still sick. Uh, plus some stuff about the old M- uh, members of the Order of the Stone are having a, a tough time measuring up to their own accomplishments. Plus some stuff about the Minecraft details of the world. Like, we go to the end in this episode, and it's yeah. uh, it, it's weird there. <laughs> Uh, so it, it, but that's basically the the episode, and in none of those points is Ivor really important at all to have around. Like we have a villain, we have a, a fight, we have character growth of our own, we have a mechanism by which our characters will amount to the fight, and Ivor is just not part of that. And yeah, clearly he will be. There, there's two more episodes, and like I think, I think. Uh, Ivor's relationship to the older Order of the Stone is going to be like the culmination point of this, uh, it, these first five episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he just doesn't come back. Maybe he gets hit by a bus. Okay. Okay. Like right after this, you, you hear, oh my God, did, did you guys hear Ivor got hit by a bus? He's dead, man. He's dead. And then he's just, he's, he was never relevant. I love that. I hope it. <laughs> like he he is the cause of the wither storm if yeah we wanted to view the wither as an extension of his actions i guess we could do that yeah that's yeah. true um we could do that yeah. if we wanted if we wanted he he kind of looks like it with the with his long droopy black hair yeah i don't care about these characters for the most part no. Is the yeah. tr- that's the trouble with this series? Yeah, uh, I don't hate them. I don't like hate these guys. It's not like New Tales from the Borderlands where I'm just sick of everybody. But I just I have nothing to latch onto with these characters. No real personalities. Mm-hmm. You're you're with Olivia. I kind of liked how in the last episode you got a little bit with Olivia. I thought it was cool. Uh, yeah, having her uh, fangirl over uh, Eligard. Uh, that was neat, but. Here it's just she's she doesn't do anything. Axel doesn't do anything. You're separated from uh the other two uh last episode. Uh you meet back with the, up with them later, but it it's not like they really do that much. So yeah, it's hard to be that invested when you're not that interested in these characters. Yeah, so at the beginning of the episode it was looking pretty promising. Yeah. Um, Ivor locks you in that library and then you need to go through Soren's weird castle looking for him and then you find yourself in a uh, an enemy grinder which I thought was cool it, it's cool that they're building in a lot of things into the story that are not from Minecraft explicitly like it's not a mechanic in the game but right. it is something people commonly do in Minecraft yeah that's uh, neat yeah, like like this this uh, this loot grinder. I've seen people do things like this where they build catacombs under the surface of the, the the world that direct zombies and skeletons and spiders or and whatever's around uh, down in the dirt into a grinder where they're then crushed up and then their drops are like funneled through a system of pneumatic tubes into a, a like a loot room where things just collect right i i feel like if i were really into minecraft if i knew that i would think this is really cool oh well how do you feel now well now i do think it's cool. <laughs> okay I, I'm, I'm just saying at the time you know i i didn't really feel one way or the other about it 
Yeah, it's I I I don't know if I think it's cool because like you know I I I know that happens, but I don't have a, a further relationship with the idea. It, it was right, just, well, it's just interesting that like a lot of the stuff they're pulling from is from players' relationship with Minecraft rather than the actual material of Minecraft that's there. Yeah, exactly. I think I think that's cool. I like that they take something that uh, the players do and make it like a part of the story. Yeah, there's there's a few other instances of, of that happening. Like it, it it felt very like that in the um, in, in the 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 building competition in the first episode where they just made a lot of stuff out of wool that was just basically a like just a big statue out of wool and you know wool is in the game to do wool stuff but people usually just use it because you can color it however you want and it um it it, it's a good building material because it's cheap and and affordable easy to get easy to color easy to build with (laughs) Mitchell Wolf, you've sold me. You know what? That's all I came here to do. I'm on the wool train. Yeah, can I interest you in some wool? Well, you know what? Ten seconds ago, I would have said no, but now I'm all in. It's a big square with your name on it. Hell yes! So in the in the grinder uh, area, Jesse drops the uh, what is it? The amulet. Yeah, the amulet. That was leading them to Soren. And it looked for a second like I could have possibly caught the amulet, but yeah. so much happened in response to me dropping the amulet that there's there's no way. Like, I, I had to have dropped that thing, right? Yeah, I dropped it, but you do have the option to catch it, but it's real fast. I wonder if, uh, I wonder if it's either to fool you into thinking you could do it, and like... Even if you did do it, you would just drop it. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Do or... you have the choices? I know you've sometimes looked oh, up shit. the choices. I I didn't list this time, but I'll look it up. I'm yeah, I'm I'm a I'm appointing you to choice duty here. Uh because I'd love to know if whether or not you caught the amulet is listed. Okay, okay. Um The last place you look, Minecraft story mode wiki. In the meantime, Dropping the amulet sends it down like a few stories within this multi-tiered giant grinder system thing. And uh, the intro to the episode, like the musical intro with the credits appearing sort of in universe, is done very, very well this time. And I was kind of hyped on the episode a little bit in that moment because I thought like, oh yeah, we're, we're... fighting a bunch of zombies a bunch of skeletons we're swinging around we're jumping down things we're having an action sequence every of every one of the party members is getting involved in some way axel's doing stuff we're all getting in on it and uh and and then like from there it was a lot slower (laughs) after that point (laughs) uh but there is one point in that sequence where you get to choose to either try getting the amulet which is like teetering off the edge of a thing or right. immediately going to help axel and reuben who are fighting off some monsters and it looks like maybe they're not doing a good job uh yeah what did you do here oh i went down to help him uh, obviously oh Just i did helping my friends Ooh, what happens well the so what i really wanted to do was uh i was with lucas right right and I was given the option to go get the amulet, and I, I figured, and I turned out to be correct in this case, if I do that, I will tell Lucas to go help Reuben and Axel. And I wanted to offer some trust to Lucas. You like, know what's funny about that? Hmm. That's why I told him to go after the amulet. Oh, okay. Be- because earlier in the episode, he and Lucas were kind of fighting over who gets to hold the amulet. So I figured, you know what? I'll help my friends. Lucas, I'm trusting you with the amulet. Okay, okay. Yeah, Lucas was fighting Jesse over the amulet. What's up with that? That, that was like a weird one-off. That didn't repeat. Jesse's kind of weird in this episode. I guess that's up to your choices. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's your fault. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, yeah, and like after that point, Petra pulls me aside and says, Dude, what the hell? 
you like ignored your friends to go to uh just for the amulet you think it's that important and i was like yeah dude it was that important i'm very important the amulet's very important that was my choice to say to petra because (laughs) i didn't like her tone you're you're being a little stinker today a little bad boy well after that point lucas comes up to me and says or and i have the option to say to lucas hey thanks for saving reuben and axel that was great and lucas says yeah you know anytime you don't have to do it all on your own jesse and uh so so lucas approved you know he he was uh he was happy that i as jesse took the opportunity to distribute some responsibility to the non-player characters of the party right i I mean i guess that's what you're doing no matter what you choose yeah that's true uh did did anyone take you aside and tell you that your choice sucked when you did it or was that just me it was just you cool (laughs) (laughs) i i still think i'm good i wanted lucas to be in a fight well here's here's the thing i feel like a lot of the choices in this game don't I mean, I mean, they kind of matter, I guess. I was about to say they don't matter, we w- but... We won't know until episode five. That's always been the yeah. case. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's not like season one of Walking Dead where you get, like, an immediate result with, like, saving Doug or Carly. Sure. Uh, I like this opening sequence in this one, how it's more uh, interactive than we've seen so far. But we do get one very immediate doug or carly kind of choice later in this episode near the end oh uh, uh, yeah that's yeah that's that's why i said i was about to say the choices don't feel like they matter but then i remembered uh that last one so you you go through the catacombs of lucas's or not lucas's soren's castle thing after that point and eventually find a portal to the end the end being for non minecraft literate folk out there the uh the deepest sort of sub reality pocket dimension whatever you want to call it within minecraft ooh it, i didn't know that it is deeper than the nether so the ooh, the nether is okay. like you need to go through a portal to go through the nether uh from the the real world and then the end is further in than that the the end is like one step further than the nether. Yeah, it is called the end because that is the end of the game. Uh, you go to the end and you fight the Ender Dragon, and you see the Endermen, and uh, it, I think if you, I think you can roll credits if you kill the Ender Dragon. Ooh, the Endermen sounds like a band. Um, sure. <laughs> There's a point I, where I we have to come up with a name for a, a lot of Endermen at once, and we can either say a haunting, which I believe is like the correct thing, or right. it's a crap ton. I said a crap ton. That's very funny. I said a haunting. I don't joke. <laughs> I do not joke around. I said that was very funny. In this case, I'm saying that is a negative thing. It's negative that it was funny? Yeah, you're saying. Yeah, you were saying that you never joke. No, I never joke. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I thought I thought it was a good time to joke around. No, that's later in the podcast. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So you're in the end, and you're dropped in with a bunch of Endermen. How do you How do you feel about these Endermen? About how this game portrays Endermen? Uh, I kind of like it. I thought it was neat. I, I thought it was a, a good hook for the episode. Like I uh, like I said before, the Enderman episode. Yeah, the end is, is such like a lore-heavy aspect of Minecraft in a world without any lore whatsoever, for the most part. Right. Uh, so I was kind of waiting to see if they would just... It, because you could go two ways with, with adapting Minecraft into a story. You could either go full made up layer of fantasy on top of Minecraft, or you could try to investigate some of like how Minecraft works and pull that into the forefront. And it looks like they're kind of doing that a little bit with the end. We find a lot more about how Endermen work in this episode and uh, which we already talked about. And, and, and just like the physics of the end and things like that. 
Right. I I like that it's just, like, informing you a little bit without totally spelling out, like, everything about them. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's just getting some uh, some new bits of info while leaving them uh mostly a thing of mystery. They they do feel like there's something to them that I'm just not grasping. Like there's still I want to hear more about like do we know anything about how they came to be, about their relationship to the end? Um although may, maybe these things are answered by other Minecraft materials, but uh it, it seems maybe not the case. Right. I I was looking it up earlier uh, just because I wanted to clear it up a little bit. In the wiki says, an Enderman is a neutral mob that can be found in Minecraft. They can usually be found in every biome. Uh, Oh, shit. This doesn't say what they are. I thought I I I saw something else that said exactly what they were. Did you remember? I thought I knew. Did you remember what you saw? Huh. Uh, Hmm. Maybe let's all forget I brought it up in that case. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you see Soren go up a staircase, and you go up that staircase. All the while, Petra has a lot of moments of like, I'm fine. And then she coughs radioactive blood, and then she's like, I'm fine. And then you, have <laughs> just, you just have to deal with that. Yeah, you just have to say, well, I guess uh, she's fine then. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then Lucas is getting angry at this point as well (laughs) yeah who does petra think she is being sick like this yeah lucas is getting angry because something's wrong with petra and like uh i chose not to tell lucas anything about it same i mean petra said let me be the one to tell people and i didn't want to i didn't want to take that away yeah there's a lot of there's there's a lot of times in this game that I, i i think make it more oriented toward children than the walking dead or games like the walking dead because in the walking dead this could happen and then someone said someone might say look i know it's none of my business but if i can do something to help i want to help and that might be like the kind of person you deal with but in in minecraft people are just a little less mature not in like how they talk or how they act but just in in terms of their understanding of the rest of the world because Lucas was not about to say, I know it's not by my business. Lucas has no concept of it not being his business. You, <laughs> you try to say, look, it's not my place to tell. And Lucas says, are you kidding? You would keep a secret from me? Are you joking me right now? Yeah. And like, it. I, I wonder, I wonder how good that is for children to, to like maybe accurately display how children don't have um, <laughs> much of a sense of empathy at that age uh, <laughs> that the game is being targeted at. Right. Yeah. Like, like, do you think kids like that more? Or do you think they m- might be able to handle the, the more walking dead, higher level personality choices? Uh, I think they'd be able to handle it, but I think it, it might help, uh, character personalities read better, I guess. Like, you're, yeah. you're getting how Lucas is coming across in this situation mm-hmm. more this way than if you got, like, a more nuanced response from him. Yeah, and it, and it kind of feels, <laughs> I, I can hear what I sound like, and I kind of understand that saying the personalities in the characters in Minecraft story mode should have been more subtle and sophisticated. <laughs> I, I understand that's sort of dumb, but, you know, we're, we're bringing the game to our podcast. It's in our house now. Right. I, I'll, I will say I kind of like it better this way. At least it gives me something to latch on to with Lucas. Yeah. So later on, Lucas finds out. I think Petra tells Lucas in, like, while off camera right and uh then he he kind of calms down yeah good for him yeah good job lucas luke ass why'd you why'd you say it like that (laughs) i don't know what a good question huh well at the top of those stairs when you're following lucas um i got a trophy at that point for um i believe it was called a world of pure imagination referencing the tiny door that leads into the 
um, Wonderland in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Ooh. And yeah, it's it's just like a it it's it looks like this cloud in the end from the outside, but inside the cloud, uh, Soren has decorated it to just look like a like a meadow with some trees and a stream and and some wood bridges and just nice stuff. It's all yeah, made out of I'll, wool. I'll, uh, wool trees. You brought you brought the wool back around. Uh, we yeah, get a the, line. The wool's I been like so here. important this episode. Oh, yeah? <laughs> uh, Jesse says, uh, isn't it impressive that he made a perfect replica of this stuff? And Lucas says, impressively banana pants. <laughs> I don't think I got that one. That's great. <laughs> I was like, whoa. I'm going to call stuff banana pants from now on. I think it's entering just w- the vernacular. <laughs> just waited to break that one out, huh, Lucas? You just went, you just jumped right into the best character spot. <laughs> uh, so eventually you find Lucas, and he's voiced by John Hodgman. Yeah. That was great. I I didn't realize that until this episode when I actually watched the credits. Um, What, you didn't realize it until the, you saw the credits, or, or what? Yeah, I I just didn't realize it and know until I was like until it came by in the credits and I was like, oh, 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 this is my turn to. I don't get to do this very often compared to you, but I knew that guy immediately. Oh, I, I recognized John Hodgman anywhere. I'm I'm glad. I, I'm glad that you get to have this today. Yeah, I like that guy a lot. Um, he was a PC. <laughs> <laughs> he was back in the day. Uh, he did right. a lot of other things. And then he was in this. That's true. He was in this, but he was also in other things as well. Yeah, I believe he was in the... Um, I believe he was in the music video for Nemesis by Jonathan Colton. That is not... Wow. The, there's tons of big things I could pull out, but I'm choosing <laughs> just the eccentri- like the extra stuff I know about John Hodgman. <laughs> <laughs> what What do you think is his biggest... Like like the Daily Show, maybe? What What's his biggest point of reference? Daily Show is what I was thinking. Uh, that's the only one I really knew. I think, I think he was in... Uh, the venture brothers at one point i don't know him super well he was in venture you know what i could totally imagine him in in something like venture brothers that makes sense right um yeah it's it's him and then i think people often get him confused with uh chris parnell Uh uh-huh who was on saturday night live for a while and more recently has played jerry in rick and morty that's true that's true um but i'll tell you this i'll never get him confused with chris parnell that's john hodgman yeah well like i i didn't listen to lucas and think that's chris parnell yeah (laughs) (laughs) um but it's soren not not lucas yeah soren oh was oh my god i got all turned around yeah, no, no, no. We're talking about Soren. We're talking about Soren. I like Soren. Yeah, he's John Hodgman. Yeah. <laughs> this podcast sucks today. <laughs> no, it's good. Are we? Are we good? Yeah, let's. Okay. Yeah, let's keep. Let's just go on ahead. <laughs> I like Soren. I think he is one of the few characters I can kind of get a personal a personality out of. He, yeah. he really does strike me as someone who has been locked away for so long that uh you meet up with him and he's just uh he's just a little weird in the way he talks and presents himself yeah he's Uh, very eccentric but uh sort of like shell shock and sheltered um he's yeah he fancies himself an ethnographer of these endermen and he goes out and walks around with them in an enderman costume and he just he's i think he's trying to get them to build for him yeah he's he's training them to build he has the building table out with the enderman yeah um i, I like his hair he looks swanky 
Yeah, I do like that aspect about him. He has swanky hair, a good little mustache. <laughs> that uh, is a good little mustache. Yeah, and then you, you, you finally, eventually find him and get to talk with him. And he, like all of the other uh, Order of the Stone members, is hesitant to join up with anything. Because I guess they're all just kind of deadbeats now. Right. Uh, but you can convince him eventually to help you out with the Wither sp- uh, Storm because you need him to build the Formidabomb. Right. The big fancy Formidabomb that puts everyone else to shame. Yeah. And uh, it, it turns out that it's easy enough to build a Formidabomb. You just need to get Super TNT and then surround it with gunpowder on the uh, on the crafting table. And that's a Formidabomb. Just that easy. Yeah, it seems like they could have... I don't know what goes into making Super TNT, but it seems like this could have been done on its own. Yeah, I guess just no one else knew the the crafting recipe. Yeah, it, 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 again, like, we, we've talked about this before, but with Eligard and Magnus, Eligard's like the, the tinkerer uh, who makes machines and stuff. Magnus is the demolitions expert, and then, like, it's this third guy who ends up making the bomb. Yeah. Isn't that kind of... Yeah. It's not good. I was thinking about it the whole time. I was like, that's that's very sloppy. Yeah. So, um, eventually, you, you leave the end. You need to do some stealth sequences away from the Endermen. Uh, and then you meet up with Eligard and Magnus, who are outside the castle, fighting a horde of enemies and they're all running away and then you find the uh, the wither is there the enemies are running away from the wither so it's time to make the formidabomb eligard and magnus both offer you to uh use their armor right which i thought was a weird moment but uh you know like translating it back into minecraft stat language just the armor would protect against the bomb yeah and I, I figured, like, whoever I take this armor from is gonna be fucked. Oh, you so you knew that? Yeah, well, that's just the feeling I got when they were talking about it. I was like, why else would they have me choose whose armor to take? Because, like we were talking about last episode, Eligar does a much better job of kind of getting you on her side. Magnus is a, well, a shit stick. Yeah, but we did see Eligard a lot more. In the last episode, just because of a choice we made in the first episode. So right, it, but... It, it, it's possible that maybe Magnus is more convincing when you go to Boomtown yourself. Maybe, but he just strikes me as uh, an asshat. So, you picked the Magnus art armor then because you knew that Magnus would probably die? I had a feeling. I was like, look, one of you guys is going to be without armor. They wouldn't be making this a choice if it wasn't going to have some sort of outcome to like up up until now the choices are kind of just whatever whatever you want to however you want to go about it but i figure this is the one at the end this is going to be the big one i like eligard and want to keep her around so magnus i'm taking your armor buddy so that's funny because i i genuinely did not see how this was gonna go um i i just they were offering me their armor and i thought that was such a weird choice uh, and I thought it might have to do with, like, okay, if I get Eligard's armor, I get redstone crafting expertise later on. Like, oh, maybe I'll be better at it for some reason. Or right, if I you take were just Magnus's, the... I, I get, like, demolition expert stat points. Right. You were thinking, like, the armor would give you some sort of other skill. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And also, I knew I know it's going to maybe permanently change the way I look for a while. So uh, right. I was worried about that. Um, and I picked Magnus's as well, but for the different reason of, I thought maybe I would just do better at bombs at uh-huh. that point. And also I thought I, it like, it looked cooler. It does. I, I just like the green. It's a bolder look. Although now me and Axel kind of have the same color palette and That's everyone true. before had different color palettes, which I uh, liked more. I agree. So, you do it. <laughs> uh, you build the Formidabomb, and a big explosion happens. You It looks like you kill the Wither, 
at first. Right. And you, you kind of do. Uh, Magnus dies if you chose Magnus's armor. Yeah. He does die. Yeah, I, I just kind of had a feeling, and I did not feel bad about this choice. Yeah, uh, you know, at first I kind of, I saw what Magnus's armor on Jesse looked like, and I was thinking like, oh, maybe I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then when Magnus died and I realized Eligard could have, I, I felt like, yeah, I, I don't want Eligard to die. So this is good. Yeah, this it, is fine. Magnus was the expendable one on the team. Mm-hmm. Um, so after that point, you see a bunch of survivors running out of the collapsed wither and you go in to help the other survivors and then you see the command block. For some reason it wasn't blown up. Oh no. Oh shit. And the command block looks fine. It starts whirring about and it reanimates the wither and, uh, it, it's about to suck you up, but then Gabriel comes and Gabriel was there. Yay, we see Gabriel again. Um, and, and he pulls you back down. But he looks terrible. Uh, he's got yeah. the wither sickness, just like Petra, but maybe more advanced. Right. Yeah, you're like, uh, Gabriel, I'm so glad you're here. And he goes, who's Gabriel? <laughs> uh, and yeah, who is Gabriel? No, and he's Gabriel. <laughs> That's not the question we need to ask on this podcast. <laughs> uh and that's the yeah. end of the episode wow this was a fast one fast one to talk about Not, yeah i i did it was a, did lo- a little was... longer than last episode yeah which is we talked a lot about the last episode even though it gave us less here i feel like this is a stronger episode than the last one but there really just isn't much to say it's just like I, I guess it's just since it's more, like, action stuff happening, like, yeah. in the intro sequence and at the end. Like, there's really not much you can say. Yeah, I, I really... I, I guess we could talk a little more about Soren's place, maybe. Um, it, it's cool. Like, there are some really cool set pieces, and that is the element of this podcast that we'll have a really hard time uh, conveying to the listeners. I, I don't know how much we can talk about the way a place looks and, and yeah, one... you understand... Yeah, one room has a fountain in it. (laughs) So don't you wish you played it yourself now? Uh, Yeah, I I think it's it's just like a fine episode. It's it's good. Yeah, I don't have that much to say about it because I don't think it messes up that much, and I don't think it really achieves greatness that much either. Yeah, I agree. Just not a whole lot to talk about. It it is a step up from the last episode, which I appreciate. Uh, You know what's weird? One thing I was thinking of was how. when we were playing new Tales from the Borderlands, and yeah. as as it was going, I was kind of getting more familiar with it, and I was thinking, oh, this is what this is? I just know everything. I know what to expect from this. I know how I'm going to feel about this going forward. I'm kind of getting that with this, but, like, in a more neutral way, I guess. Like, less, like, oh, shit, is this what I have to look forward to? And more just, okay, th- this is just the way Minecraft is going to be. And, yeah. you know, maybe there's more to it going forward. Maybe they, they break out some tricks near the end. But I kind of feel like I've gotten the gist of the season. So, I I looked up what exactly the situation was with the last three episodes of this season. Because this okay. season is technically eight episodes, right? Uh, right. There was no indication there were going to be any more than five episodes until the day the fifth episode came out. Ooh. On the day the fifth ep- episode came out, then uh, Telltale announced that later in that year, they were going to offer the Adventure Pass, which gives you three more episodes. So the fifth episode is the end of the like seasonal story, at least as it was um, intended to go at first. Right. So then when the three additional episodes came out, like, I don't know what they're about, but it doesn't seem like it's going to just be an eight episode long story. Uh, Yeah. And that's interesting to think about because not only did the building the Formidabomb and taking down the Wither and like getting all of the Order of the Stone together again not happen in the last episode. It happened in the third episode. We saw that happen. So I am actually kind of excited to see how the story can pivot into 
be like having two more full episodes on top of this because uh, it needs to go in a different direction than expected, right? Because we already right. did the, a lot of the stuff. Although, of course, some of it's undone, like the wither is now back, but we did do the thing we were trying to do. Yeah, so it would it would be a little uninteresting if just going forward, it's just more of what we've already done. Yeah. Uh, but who knows? I guess I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah, we, we need to see Ivor come back into the story and make sense as a character. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we need to see him. I, I guess he's. We we need to solve the mystery of okay, he was part of the Order of the Stone, but now he's not. What what's that about? Why is why did that happen? Right. Um. Although uh, now Magnus is dead, so maybe Axel needs to become the new Order of the Stone member in Magnus's uh, place. What a coincidence! He already had the green look. Well, yeah, he already had the green, and Olivia already had Eligard's red. And Soren's outfit is not, like, color-wise dissimilar from Lucas's. Right. So everyone's got a little thing. I, I, I'm i wearing Magnus's outfit right now. I'd much rather wear Gabriel's, and he looks like he might die soon. So I hope I can get his clothes. <laughs> yeah, he ain't gonna need them where he's going. Is that is that rude to ask a dying man for his <laughs> clothes? Not when they're a Minecraft man, I guess. Um... Yeah, so I, I guess that's I guess that's basically it. In the credits, they there was a song where this guy was singing about redstone, right? For a bit, that was funny to me. Oh, was it uh, was it Soren's song? Because he kind of starts no. singing a song when you're so so that did that played in the credits after the first song, and the first song was just this song about redstone. Okay. Uh, yeah, Soren's song. It, he sings a song about each of the Endermen, and he's given them all names, and uh, he interprets their standing around as different character traits. And then also, right. if you listen to the song in the credits, halfway through it just breaks down and is no longer about Endermen at all, and he's only singing about how lonely he is. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. What a poor guy. So we we are a little ahead of schedule, uh, but do you think we should jump into segments? Yeah, I mean, no need to drag it out. I don't really have much else to say about this episode. All right, yeah. What's your golden moment? Uh, golden moment. I like just being amongst the Endermen. Okay. I thought that was I thought that was neat. I was kind of like, ooh, this uh, this could go wrong, but uh, is also. It, it You could feel that it's not something that's usual for this world. I, I liked being among these uh, strange men. Mm-hmm. What about you? Uh, mine was mine was just, like, researching around Soren's lab. There's so many little, uh, like, voice recordings from Soren where he's uh, depositing his Enderman research and uh, just decorations and a lot of books and, and, and things to explore around Olivia's right. in this room with you and you can talk to her and she's got feelings about how weird Soren is and how weird his stuff is. It's just a cool like character building moment for someone who at that point you haven't even met yet, but you will meet and you're like building up this person in your head. Who is this guy? What's this guy like? And What's uh, this guy's angle? Yeah. Yeah. I like that too. I, I liked uh, listening to the records. Yeah looking around uh what's your choice cut choice cut is whose armor to take since it actually made me think about it Uh, like i said before none of the choices before this really like the choices are like do you choose to jump down into the hole it's like okay like yeah i'm gonna jump in the hole because i just want the episode to go faster (laughs) like (laughs) let's speed this up people i know i'm going in the hole eventually just let's go now so i don't need to do do it. it next time (laughs) <laughs> yeah but i thought the armor actually made me be like okay what are gonna be the ramifications of this choice yeah you know i I think for me just because like i actually didn't get what they were doing with the armor i i didn't think of it, it was that interesting at the time right um, and then when magnus died i was like yeah this is fine uh because they hadn't <laughs> established eligard and magnus either of them really as characters i needed to save yet so yeah I don't know. I yeah. I I kind of. It didn't hit for me. I I'm glad that it hit for you. 
Um, Thank you. My one is going for the amulet or saving your friends in the opening sequence. That's a pretty good one, too. I, I could see that. As, especially, I could see that landing for you since you actually went for the amulet. I, yeah. I just went for the friends. So, like, I didn't see any sort of, like, outcome I could have gotten. Uh, in Weekly Guy. Soren. Yeah, it's Soren. I think Soren. Yeah, Soren's. Uh, he, I don't think he's like an incredible character, but like he has a presence. He has a, a personality I can latch on to. I know who this guy is and what he's about. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's definitely Soren. Yeah. Uh, I guess Lucas maybe had some moments here. They don't really build up to much, though. It's just he's angry. Yeah, I didn't like... I, I didn't like that, but we were talking about this before. Like, depending on your personal intrapersonal maturity levels that might play out differently right yeah i i i just think it in comparison to everyone else who didn't really do anything in this episode sure well then yeah it's the episode (laughs) it's a shorty mcshort shorts yeah we're coming in real clean real hot uh is this our shortest episode no 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 no. our our shortest one was uh uh texas hold'em which came in real real <laughs> real cold real fast uh, that makes sense yeah that one was because we we had a, a recording issue halfway through the episode where we lost like half of it and oh it was my god i forgot about that yeah and it was fine and i think we just released it <laughs> <laughs> We just said that's good, fine, whatever. Yeah, I mean, we we talked about the game enough. We did our due diligence. The rest of it was just <laughs> conversation. Ew, ew, get that shit out of here. Yeah, well, I guess I'm I'm happy to see you next week, Dustin, where we'll talk about Minecraft Story Mode Episode Four. And until then, have a great summer. Have a great summer, you guys. Uh-